And now for number six. So number six is uh, anything but straightforward. <laughs> but I think we can I think we can handle it. So let's go uh, to number six here. So number six, uh, what this is is a, this is a managerial accounting kind of business de decision that we're going to work through here. So we're given the information up top, and we're given some kind of some restrictions and and the framework for our decision. And really, the decision is is uh, we're thinking about adding another shift. So should we add another shift? We're also thinking about possibly doing maybe an advertising campaign that'll cost us so much money. Should we do that advertising campaign? So this is uh, this is how it's going to be structured. So I'm going to fill in the rows for you and kind of talk to you about how uh, this is uh, calculated as we go. So the first thing we have is it says determine the contribution margin per machine hour that each product generates. So this is going to be important because the shifts are going to be a certain amount of hours that we're going to add to our production, right? So shifts are in hours, so we have to actually convert our contribution margin, which is kind of our profitability, right, uh, component. We're going, to we're going to have to convert that into hours, okay? So that's what that does for us. So our contribution margin per unit is easy. We're going to just pull that off of uh, the numbers above here, right? Contribution margin per unit. But then we're going to have to divide that, the contribution margin per unit, by the machine hours per unit, okay? And that's going to convert the contribution margin per unit into contribution margin per machine hour. So our uh, machine hours per unit's up here, right? So we're going to take our 110, for example, and we're going to divide it by 0.4. And that'll give us our contribution margin per machine hour. Uh, we're also going to divide uh, 88 by 1, which is 88, right? That's pretty straightforward. So that's going to be our contribution margin per machine hour. And then we're going to go down here to the to the next section. So now we have the maximum number of units to be sold. So that's that's they're just pulling that down from up top here. So that's some, that's the max that we can sell. Okay? And so we're going to calculate how many hours we would have to run to generate the, that maximum. So, so this this is pretty straightforward down here. In order to calculate the hours required to produce maximum units, we need to multiply uh, our 550 and our 200 by their uh, by these machine hours to produce one unit, right? So we're actually multiplying this time. So it's going to be 550 times 0.4 and 200 times one. So that that'll give us our hours required to produce maximum uh, units. Okay, now let's go on to the second section. So that's, that tells us some stuff that we're going to be using down here on the bottom to be able to make our decisions. Um, okay, so number two, it says how many units of product G and B should the company produce if it continues to operate with only one shift? So what if we just do one shift? How, sh how many of each should we produce? Well, we, we look up top and we can see that product G is obviously the most the most uh, profitable. Okay, it gives us the most contribution uh, margin per machine hour. So if we have hours to run, we should run and produce product G. Okay, and so we got we got to calculate if we just run one shift, right? So if we want one run one shift, how many machine hours are we gonna be able to? Uh, how many can we use to to do just product G? So with a single shift, uh, that's actually gonna be 176 hours per month. So we're we're assuming this. We're saying we run an eight-hour shift and we're able to run it for 22 days. I think that's told to us up here, right? Eight-hour shift for 22 working days per month. So that's uh, eight times 22 gives us 176 hours per month to run. So how many uh, of unit G can we make in an hour? 
we can we know how much how many we can make in an hour if we divide 176 by our 0.4 okay so let's do it let's do it this way so the total number of hours we're able to run is 176 right um, and so if we divide that by 0.4 that will give us the units that we can produce units of G right we can do, that we can create per month okay because this this right here is the monthly hours this is how many hours it takes to make one unit right so that's going to give us the numbers we can make in one month and so then we take whatever that this answer is right however many units we can make in a month and we multiply that by our per unit contribution margin. Okay, per unit contribution margin. And that's going to give us the total contribution margin that we can expect from unit G. And we'll, what we'll find is if we're only going to run one, uh, one shift, we want to just do units uh, of product G. We don't want to do any of the other product because we're able to just produce product G. And really our restraint then becomes this. So our restraint on that is going to be uh, this up here, our 550 units of product G. As long as we stay under that 550, we can spend all of our time making product G and making the most money. So that's number two. So that's total contribution margin for one shift, and that so that's what we calculated there. So now, now what we're going to do is we're going to do number three. Okay. So on number three, we're going to be calculating. So or they're asking the question: If the company adds another shift, so what if we add a second shift? How many units of product G and product B should it produce? How much total contribution margin would this uh, mix produce each month? Okay, and so, so what we need to do is we need to say, okay, we know that we can we can uh, dedicate 176 hours to product G at least for one shift. What if we had the potential to, to put another shift in there, right? Another 176 hours. Well, let's see how many. How, how many uh, hours it would take to get us up to this max right here, right? Okay, so if, if, if we, for example, if we were to take the max, so this is 176 hours, right? And that's uh, times two, right? So that's actually gonna be uh, 352 hours, okay? Now we know, if, we know if we just did product G, we'd be able to make, uh, every 0.4 hours we're able to make some products so uh, if this is greater than 550 right if it's greater than 550 then we cannot produce that much and which is the case right so what we got to do is we got to say okay how much do we have to produce to get us uh, our uh, 550 units per month so we, when we find that out by um, by multiplying 550 units by the 0.4, and that will tell us how many hours we can give over to product G. Okay, the rest of the hours have to be uh, have to be for product uh, B, right? Out of this 352, right? So however many hours we give to product G, we have to subtract that from 352, and that's how many hours we can spend on product B, or how many we have to, right? Because we've already maxed out of product G. All righty. And so let's go back to our table here real quick. Okay, so here's our product G. So our hours dedicated to the product of each product. So we that's what we just talked about. What that split is, okay? Units produced for most profitable uh, sales mix. Well, it's going to be the hours, right? Divided by the point four and the and the one, okay? 
and that'll give us how many units we're gonna make of each. And then we plug in our contribution margin per unit right there. And that's gonna give us, uh, we multiply that out and that will give us total contribution for, whoops, contribution margin per unit, sorry. Contribution margin per unit, we're down here in three. Uh, units produced for most profitable mix and then our contribution margin per unit and we multiply that out and that'll give us total contribution margin for two shifts. Okay, total contribution margin for two shifts. Now what we need to do here, once we calculate the, the contribution margin for one shift, it'll, it'll fly into this next row. And so then that is subtracted from our two shifts total and tells us what the change in contribution margin is. Right? what our additional benefit is from having one more shift. Then we go ahead and subtract our uh, extra cost for having another shift, which is right up here, right? 11,000 bucks is the additional fixed cost for having a second shift. That's gonna go on, on the, this line right here. So that's subtracted from uh, the line above it. And then that's gonna be our change in operating income loss. So that really is the bottom line. If this is positive, then we put yes down here in this uh, box. If it's negative, we put no. All right, so now for the very last one. So the very last one, number four here, is we're, we're gonna say, okay, let's assume that we can market some more and increase our max for uh, product G and B. So right up here, we're gonna increase the, this max here, right? So it's no longer 550 or 200. So we're gonna go back through and we're gonna say product G's new max is 600 units. And we're gonna spend 10,000 bucks here on that marketing campaign. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we're gonna take, uh, we're gonna do a, our new split of hours, right? So we're assuming we still have two shifts here. We're, we still have 352 uh, hours, right? 352 hours, but now we need to split that between product G and B, right? And so that is done. Now instead of 550, we have, uh, what was it, 600, right? 600 times 0.4, right? That'll tell us the hours for G. We need to subtract those hours from G from the total, right? Subtract the G hours, and then that'll give us the hours for product B. So that's how we do that split between the hours. So that'll give us our hour split. Now we need to, now we need to then uh, multiply, or I should say, um, divide, I'm sorry, by this, uh, by our machine hours per unit, right? To see how many units we'll pre be producing. Okay, we're still gonna max out on, on product G at I believe 600 units, that's gonna be our max. And then, well, product B will be different though. And then we're gonna have our contribution uh, margin per unit that we're gonna get from up here, right? Contribution margin per unit, we're gonna plug that in and multiply it. And that'll turn into our uh, total contribution margin for two shifts. We're gonna sh subtract the, uh, the contribution margin for two shifts from up here, right here that we calculated. We're gonna go ahead and move that down. I think it does it automatically. And then we're gonna plug in on these next rows, change in contribution margin, so that'll be the, the new two shift one that we did minus the old two shift contribution margin will be the change. We're gonna subtract out any additional marketing costs, which is the 10,000 up here. And then that will give us a, uh, and we're gonna subtract out any uh, additional fixed cost, which actually is uh, our 11,000 from up here as well. And then that will give us our, our new change in operating uh, income or a, a change in operating uh, loss. And so that if it's a loss, the answer is no. If it's a positive income, the answer is yes. So hopefully that helps. If you have any more questions as you work through that, let me know. 
and I'll help you out as much as I can. We'll uh, talk to you later. Have a good day.